Republican Senator Jeff Flake is already comparing Donald Trump's attack on the media to Joseph Stalin's. Generally, when you go down this avenue, you're losing your audience very quickly. But what do I know? Media Research Center founder and President Brent Bozell. Brent, what did you make of that? Yeah, I, I, Neil, I think it's stunning. Uh, if this were anybody else saying this about the president of the United States, um, I think he would be thrown out uh, of, of his office. He'd be thrown out of his office on Capitol Hill by his colleagues. Um, but this is a man, Jeff Flake, who is working overtime to curry favor with the National Press Corps that despise Donald Trump, and they're loving that he says it. But let me be, uh, in the infamous words of Richard Nixon, be very clear about something, what I think of Jeff Flake. I believe, in my, in, in my, in my opinion, Jeff Flake is an intellectual fraud. He stole the title, a conscience of a conservative, the best-selling polemic in history, and made it his own. He's also a political fraud. This is the man who was elected by the Tea Party and immediately stabbed them in the back, which is why he is the most uh, uh, unpopular person in Arizona. And the reason he's not running for re for reelection is because he's radioactive because he's so unpopular, which is why the national media love him, because he, he's going in their direction. You know, I think you lose an audience with things like the Hitler comparison, I would say the Stalin comparison. Uh, save it for those guys. There's no one to compare Hitler to except Hitler. There's no one to compare Stalin to except Stalin. So stop it already. Yeah. M m must, must one point out that Joseph Stalin killed 20 million people more than Donald Trump? Incredible. Uh, must one person point out that, that, that he is, in effect, President Trump is the opposite of Joe Stalin, where the media are concerned, in that Joe Stalin controlled the media. And if anything that Donald Trump doesn't control, it's the national news media. So, but, but it's all an attempt to curry favor, whether it's with the Washington Post or CNN or one of them, which is, look at me, look at me, look at the bright, shining object called Jeff Flake. I'll do your bidding. I will attack him personally, and, I, and, and you won't be called for, You'll just be reporting the news when you report the attacks that I made. He was among all the Republican senators, though, who voted for this tax package. What did you think of that? Well, you know, consider this also. I mean, this is where, where Jeff Flake come, comes to play. And Jeff Flake is so, so much of an enemy of this president that he went out of his way to confirm that he had heard that Donald Trump had used the words that he had used. And Jeff Flake, who is part of this small group of bipartisan senators who was, who was uh, debating this, you know, the DACA thing, he wasn't even there. So whether it's DACA, whether it's tax policy or whatnot, Jeff Flake really is an irrelevant human being. All right, so you're not a fan. Uh, where do you think yep. this goes with the obsession with what the president might have said, whether he used foul language or what? Um, days ahead of what could be a potential government shutdown. Where is this thing going? Well, let's say something about, about that foul language and CNN. And, and the audience needs to be very clear about this. Those of us who were on your network talking were admonished by producers in our ear not to use that word. CNN put it on, has put it on hundreds of times and mentioned it hundreds of times since they've been doing it. When they put it on that crawl space, where is it being viewed? In virtually every airport in America, they saw it. In a doctor's office, they saw it. In a school, they saw it. This is CNN's commitment to a sense of decency. I think the American public is getting sick and tired. They don't like the fact that the president might have said that, no question about it. But they're getting sick and tired of people who are in organizations that are obsessing it at a time that we're in a national crisis with our, with our economy. You know, um, I remember Barack Obama referring to a certain storm in Syria and didn't get a fraction of the grief in Libya, I should no, say. No, and, 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 and one of my colleagues, Craig Bannister, has done a little bit of, of history, and you can trace that word going back to Abraham Lincoln. No kidding. He used it, too. Um, and uh, Barack Obama used plenty of other terms, too. You didn't see CNN putting it on the screen. CNN never even reported it. And one wonders, in the cosmic order of things, Neil, if you look at that term, he was not, 
Just think about this in an obvious sense. You, you would be referring to the state of the government, the state of the country, not the people living in it. And one last point, I look anybody in the eye and ask them, have you ever used a phrase such as that? And guess what? All of us have, including the reporters at CNN. I'm surprised you, you've used that kind of language, frankly. Um, Trent, thank you very, very much. No, I'll deny it. Just yeah, like Trump. Well, Brent, that's what you got to do. You got to plausible denial. Uh, Brent Bozell, very good seeing you.